Let's go to the first game up here, guys. We hit it to the streets of Charlotte here. We have the Hornets here. Land points, surprisingly. Two and a half points at home versus the Atlanta Hawks here. Uh, if you'd like to take the money line, they're laying minus 140. Over and under, sitting at 240 in this one, Chris. Um, how are you looking at the game? Do you agree with the Hornets being favored here over the Hawks? Yeah, I, I do think the Hornets should be favored here. You know, I, I would like this game less if the Hornets won two nights ago in that overtime game um, against the Pistons, right? I think that's uh, – but, you know, Lamella Ball coming back for his first game, right? Uh, as soon as he comes back, the offense kind of hums a little bit. You see a lot of fast-paced action in that game. But uh, their coach after the game, Steve Clifford, commenting on how this team is just not playing any kind of defense right now, right? Like he was saying there's not one bright spot. And if Charlotte ends up winning that game, maybe I don't like this as much, but because LaMelo came back, they still lost in overtime to a team they should really beat at home. This is a good spot for the Hornets, and I think they do play some better defense here tonight too. You know, usually when your coach or somebody calls you out like that in the public, there's some kind of response. And this Atlanta Hawks team, man, this is a team to fade right now. I mean, we've – been saying that on the show. I know we fade them when they're on the road. I know many of us do. Uh, but, you know, some of their best defensive players are going to be still out in this game. John Collins, now Clint Capella. You know, the John T. Murray has been out. Um, so the Hornets should be able to find some offensive success in this game. And, you know, they found some rhythm already in that last game. So maybe that hopefully that pours over into this one. And then if they play better defense on top of it, which is not something we see a lot from Charlotte, then it, it, it that should be all she wrote for a nice home game, nice situation here for Charlotte at home. So taking the Hornets at a short line, right now the Hawks are just a disparate mess, man. I just want to stay away from them. I'm right there with you, Chris. I hadn't taken this play yet, but I might ride with you. Um, the Hornets, the only way I could look here, Alex, obviously you have the 7-21 and 21 team that's favored over the 14-15 and 15 team um, as well, so I think that's very telling. Uh, Trey Young, it seemed like he's falling off the cliff. I can't be the only one that's seeing this. Uh, Trey Young looks like a totally different player. I don't, I don't. It's like, can he shoot? Is something wrong with your hand or something, man? But, yeah, I could only look towards the Hornets in this one, Alex. Do you think that uh, with the coach's speech lights a fire up under this team? I, I think so, but I, I think it's really more about just fading the Hawks. This team is a mess, and I think what you're seeing from Trey Young is a combination of two things. Um, had that weird press conference where he wouldn't talk about why he didn't come to the game and he wasn't playing. McMillan basically throws him under the bus in a press conference, and the Hawks are missing their second most important player, and that's not Dewante mm -hmm. Murray. It's Clint Capella. That entire team is built around Trey Young and Clint Capella running that pick and roll, feeding all the actions they have out of that. And as good as a Kongwu can be, as good as some of the other players on that team, are when they don't have Capella, when they don't have Young, things really fall apart. They're still missing John Collins, who, as much as everyone maybe rolls their eyes at you know being a great trade candidate, is a really great glue guy. He's somebody that does everything well. He defends well. Doesn't really need the ball much. Is just a nice positive impact. You know, so you look at a team now with a really short bench. Again, no Dewante Murray. The Hawks have been terrible on the road. One of the best bets you could make all year is just fading the Hawks on the road. You'd be up about five, six units basically at that point. And um, it's a hard game for me to bet. My numbers sort of like Charlotte, but I'm always a little hesitant to back teams and they've got a guy coming back so this is a game i'll probably watch a little bit and just see if maybe we're back to what i thought preseason let's just bet hornets overs um there might just be a ton of points in this one so like atlanta maybe an over but i think you guys are i'm sorry like charlotte and maybe the over Exactly. Definitely could be a watch and learn game. I know that the uh, Hawks are only three and seven against the spread last 10 games. They're five and 10 straight up on the road and five and 10 against the spread as well. So it seems like when they lose, um, they do get blown out. They're coming off a game where they got smoked by the magic as well. Um, just kind of seem like uh, maybe, maybe they're close to, maybe they want the coach fired or something, but yes, yeah, something definitely going on in Atlanta. Um, they're on the no bet list for me right now. I'm not going anywhere near betting this team. So, uh, I could only look towards the Hornets there. Might ride with my guy, Chris in this one. So Chris is rocking with, with the Hornets uh, in this one, minus the two and a half in this one, guys. Could not talk you off in that one.